being here, Buzz TV, Brian Race. My favorite uh, football coach, Ray, of all time was the late Bud Grant of the Minnesota Vikings. And Bud, uh, Coach Grant, used to tell his team, gentlemen, cold is just a state of mind. <laughs> well, uh, here in uh, North Georgia, it might be as low as 23 tonight. And I was looking at the forecast uh, heading into the weekend, possibly into the teens. And so with all due respect to Coach Grant, I'm not sure about <laughs> this whole state of mind thing, but uh, we are here not to talk about football tonight, but to talk about the bees, making sure that they're warm yes. and happy, healthy. It really and is warm. It, and warm. That's which is yes. to me, warm equals a lot of happiness. If Absolutely. You know, if, if it's not warm, if mama not, is not warm, <laughs> nobody's going to be warm. And uh, in a sense, I know we often talk about saving the bees, well, yep. that's really what we are discussing yes, on tonight's edition of Buzz TV, uh, making sure that uh, they survive uh, the winter and uh, prosper over the winter time. And uh, Ray, uh, who's joining us, he's the owner of Mountain Sweet Honey, Mountain Sweet Honey in Tacoma, Georgia, our sponsor for Buzz TV. You can find them at mountainsweethoney.com. We're going to have um, a special tonight on some products that. Uh, we'll get to a little bit later. We'll tell you in just a few moments about how to win uh, free bees. But, uh, Ray, it's your show, so uh, take it away, sir. Well, you know, Brian, I have a little cattle farm, and uh, we were trying to load up some cattle the other morning, and uh, it was 16, 17 mm. degrees. So we were feeling that cold out there trying to load those cattle on up. And mm -hmm. so, um, but, folks, today is all about – how do we as beekeepers work our way through these winter months to make sure that our bees just aren't surviving but thriving? And that's the important thing that we have to remember here in January, February. These are the two hardest months for our hives to get through to, to the spring season. You know, almost anybody can uh, get bees going in the spring, but it's January, February that are absolutely cr crucial for your, your hives to thrive during this time of the year, Brian. So we're going to take a deep dive into that. That's all we're talking about mm -hmm. tonight on the, on that. How was your Christmas? Um, I think we were about the same as everybody sick mm. and we had the, the head and, and flu going on and, uh, and we ended up having our Christmas a week later. Um, our, our immediate family and extended family were all sick. Like uh, we saw a map of the United States and mm. it was like Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, <laughs> Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Texas were all red pulsating, you know, with the flu. And we were in, in that part there. Now I've got some feedback here. Let's That's take all right. care just of that. Just hit that, right. uh, that mute button and uh, keep listening. In just a moment, we'll share details on how to win a free package of bees. Uh, I got yep. the opportunity to go to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yes. Uh, they normally have these uh, really cool bonfires out on the Mississippi River, but I arrived a day too late. Uh, to was that get on to... a barge or no, was it no, burning just... a ship down or what? It's near a battleship that's parked <laughs> there in Baton Rouge, but they just have these big uh, bonfires. It's quite the scene. and uh, Right on the Mississippi. Right on the Mississippi River. Yeah. So and it you... just floats down and everybody just. No, no, it's it? on it's on the bank. Oh, okay. So everybody right. just goes uh, right. downtown, uh, heads towards the river, and uh, has a big celebration with the bonfires. But uh, I missed it this year, but sure is a good way to stay warm. You know, Brian, we actually turned the heat on for one of the few times here tonight in the studio mm -hmm. uh, because of the cool temperatures that are outside. And so, folks, we, we understand that we're nowhere near as cold as someone in Buffalo or in New York City right now, or even the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And I just want to say welcome to everybody this evening. But we do want to know what the temperature yes. is in your town. That's uh, the way that you get entered uh, to win a free package. And we decided on Italians. We got yes, a, a Italian free package bees. of Italian yes. bees that will be shipped out in the springtime, depending on the right location. shipping date for yep. your location. Now, tonight we're doing something we've never done before. And that is, we are live streaming on Instagram. Yes, we are. For the very first time. So if you're following Mountain Sweet Honey uh, on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, or, or at mountainsweethoney.com, yep. those are the four 
places that you have to to access the stream tonight, but you can leave comments on those social media sites. Yes. And here's the comment that we need from you, just the town you live in and the temperature. So, for example, Brian says he's from Augusta. It's 50 degrees. Scott says I'm in Appleton, New York, 24 right now. Uh, Steve over in Westminster, 43 degrees. What about you? That's how you get uh, yes. entered into the contest. Just simply put town and temperature. Uh, we might share the information, yep. but that's what gets you yep. automatically qualified. And at the end of the show tonight, uh, Aubrey, who's helping us yes, tonight, let's, let's have a big hand for hey, Aubrey. Hey, uh, hey, she's hey. over there uh, managing the the chat and praying we don't put her on camera. So <laughs> we're not, no, we're not going to put you on camera. Don't. Don't worry about that. I think that. I heard her just go out the door. Yeah, we, we might lose a very value, valued employee uh, if we do that. But she's here tonight interacting with you guys in the chat. Yep. So if you have questions, of course, you can leave those. Uh, Aubrey's very knowledgeable on yes, uh, many of the, the questions that will be asked. And the ones that she wants to punt, well, we'll throw those to our beekeeping yep, expert. Throw them at me. Ray Sivitz, I'm going to turn it over to you for the Right. main part of the show tonight all right well folks let's go ahead and let's get started here um let's go through what we're going to talk about tonight uh first of all we're going to talk about these cold winter days and how how to protect our colonies as we walk through this time of the year and and brian let's go to slide one there one of the things folks that we see this time of the year is snow and Here's just one of these quick snapshots that we got from up in the up in northern Michigan, I believe this one is. Um, if you'll see right here, snow is piled up on the entrances of each of the hives. Now, just as a reminder, your bees are still going to fly out and defecate and want to come back in as quickly as they possibly can. Now, this has to be this has to be open for for the bees to get out. If you do this, they'll be susceptible to nosema, and nosema is not a place you want your bees to be at this time of the year. But anyhow, that's that's what I wanted to just show on this particular slide here, and I appreciate Brian getting this telestrator up and going for us uh, for tonight. All right, the second thing that we're going to look at is, is how to ensure your bees make it through the cold winter months, and we're going to do a step-by-step -step on that. We're going to, we're going to be talking about pollen patties and what, you know, a lot of times we as beekeepers say, Hey, we want a 15% versus a 4% protein. Um, anytime we see something more, more higher valued, we want to go gravitate towards that. Um, we're going to, we're going to talk about that. Uh, queen orders. If you want Queens this coming season, highly, highly recommend that you, get on our website, mountainsweethoney.com slash forward slash bees and take a look at the Queens. We got some dates that we've closed out on some of our bees. Um, so just uh, take a look at it, get your order in. We're seeing elevated orders on, on queen orders. Uh, a lot of folks looking to do splits this spring. All right. And then last but not least, getting ready for the spring. We'll go through a quick checklist on that so that that everyone will be getting ready as we speak on, on this here. All right. So we all know that we all have been cold, uh, this last week here. And, you know, like we said earlier, our, our temperatures have been down in the 14 to 17 degree range. And, you know, if we go up to New York state or Ohio, uh, those temperatures are way below that in the negative numbers. And we want to, uh, you know, really, you couldn't escape it this week unless you're down in Key West, and that they had some pretty decent temperatures down there. But but this is the time that most beekeepers lose their colonies, and I've seen statistics saying anywhere from one third to two thirds of losses happen during this time of the year. So that's why we wanted to get get out here tonight and go live and talk about the these various issues. So let's start with the very basics on, on getting your bees through this time of the year is hopefully you've already treated for Varroa. If you've treated for Varroa, then we're going to continue on. If you have not, 
I would highly recommend the first day that it's above 55 degrees that you get in and treat your bees for Varroa because this is the ideal time when there's not much brood being produced and you can go on ahead and knock the Varroa out once and for all. So don't get into your hives if it's 55 degrees or less because you're going to chill your bees and chilling your bees means that you're going to lose some bees um, due to the temperature change uh, within the hive. Now, one of the other things, um, that, well, let's go, let's go to slide three here, Brian. All right, let's see here. All right, so let's talk about what, what Varroa looks like. It's right here, folks. They attach themselves on the back of the abdomen of, of the bee, uh, and that's where they get into the bloodstream of the bee, and that's how viruses get started within the hive itself. So that, that's what we've got to look at as beekeepers. They can place themselves anywhere in this area right here. Um, but this is a little lower than normal on that there. Okay, so once we got Varroa knocked out, strapping down your hives is really, really important. You know, we have seen some some really high winds uh, here locally uh, last week in the 35 to 45 mile an hour gusts. And it's just important to strap your, your bees down. And Brian, let's go to this slide here. And this is an excellent way that this beekeeper, um, he's put straps, uh, two straps on every hive. Now, I would not advocate doing two straps, just one strap going in the middle and down the other side would be sufficient uh, for this. Um, I would think that if you had two, two straps on there, that really that, that's a little overkill, but it still gets the job done. So I, I hand it to this beekeeper on, on doing that there. Okay, now the next thing that you wanna do, and we'll go back to this slide here that we were just looking at, Brian, and I'll erase all my, my lines here is making sure that our boxes are all lined up. All of our supers are lined up, that there's no way that there's a crack anywhere or it's misplaced when we're stacking, uh, stacking the hives. Everything's very uniform uh, going up and down and everything looks good in this picture here. So strapping down is very, very important. We get a lot of high winds, uh, during the winter months because the trees don't have leaves to block and thus the the hives are under more attack than ever when it comes down to the wind now let's talk about um inspecting the hive now as i i mentioned earlier 55 degrees or warmer um now i know many of you have um top top hive um feeders and that's a little different because they don't lose the heat going out with a, a top hive feeder. So um, you can get in there, just get in there, get out as quick as you possibly can. Uh, th those will retain the heat. Uh, Cirocell makes a really good feeder that we carry that will allow you to get into it in 30, 40 degree weather without any major temperature change within the hive. But as always, when we're in the winter months, we need to be quick. Um, if we're going to look for something, we need to make sure that one minute max, we're in and out and over and done with that inspection. Um, the other thing that we wanna do this time of the year is go to the rear of the, the hive and lift up the back of it just gently, maybe a half inch to an inch, just to see how much weight is inside the hive. Now. Obviously, if it's a heavier lift that, that you feel, then that means there's plenty of honey stores still left in, in there for the bees to eat. If it is light, then that tells me that I've got to go feed and start feeding immediately the colony so that they can survive through, through the winter months. Now, during the winter months, we want to use a two to one sugar ratio and you can do that by volume or by weight, two to one. And the two would be uh, two parts sugar and one part water. It's a very thick solution, but it helps your bees get through 
this time of the year and and just keeps them ready to thrive and not just survive on that there. So once again, go to the rear of your hive, lift up the back of it. You can use just one hand and that will tell you if it's light feed. If not, you can lightly feed if you want to just to maintain or you don't have to feed during that uh, this time of the year. Now you want to check those at least every three weeks as as you're working through the winter months, because there will be times that the colony really consumes a lot of those honey stores that are within the hive. So every three weeks, you want to do the lift method uh, until until the the weather uh, begins the springtime momentum in your neck of the woods. Ray, as I'm listening to you, yes. a couple of questions uh, come to mind when you're talking about uh, lifting up the back of the hive mm-hmm. and uh, sort of getting a feel for the weight. Is that something that is just completely feel that you, you as the beekeeper need to be the one to consistently say that feels lighter to me than it did two weeks ago? And yeah. then, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, a follow-up question I'll have for okay. you here in just a second. All right. So um, you're going to learn that, that heaviness or that light weightedness as you're working through this, um, this exercise of lifting the rear of the, the hive. So it, it's all going to be up here in your head, you know, is, is this lighter than it was two months ago or during the summer, you know, during the summer, you have a full super honey that's there and that's going to be easily 85 pounds and mm-hmm. on a 10 frame hive. And then my uh, follow-up question on the solution mm-hmm. that you were talking about, any risk of that to freezing or getting gummy or uh, yeah. becoming a problem here during the winter? If I remember right, Brian, um, the freeze ratio on a two to one is like negative uh, 35 or negative 40 degrees um, that it will begin to crystallize at that point. So something that could be a problem for some of our uh, viewers, but not going to be a problem uh, in North Georgia where Buzz TV originates. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. All right, Brian, tell us a little bit about our drawing here for tonight. All right. Uh, It's very simple. Uh, We are giving away a free package of Italian honeybees. The way to enter, you just tell us the town that you're watching from and what the current temperature is. Uh, Richard from Middleburg, Florida, 53 degrees. Boy, right. I wish I was in Middleburg, Florida. From Auburndale, Florida, 61. Uh, D. Wren checking in with that information. Uh, Carrollton, Georgia, reporting 45. Uh, Atlanta, 48. Uh, Rolla, Missouri. Hope I said that uh, correctly. Is that R O L O? Double L A, 36 degrees. Uh, Regency, the name uh, there. Rising Star, Texas, says it's 59. Crossville, Tennessee, 32. So not too bad with the temperatures, especially with all the viewers yeah. uh, down there in Florida yep. and uh, Texas. But at the end of the program, from everybody that takes the time on any of our channels, whether yes. that is YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, we'll have a random drawing uh, from those three channels. And somebody, hopefully you, will be the winner. You don't have to still be watching to win, but we do hope that you'll stay with us uh, for the entire program tonight. And I certainly hope that uh, you will share the broadcast with somebody yes. that you know that might enjoy this type of content. You know, Brian, I think it's time for us to go back to Florida and do some videoing. I was thinking the same thing <laughs> when I saw the uh, the teens uh, showing up on the yeah. possible temperatures this weekend. Road trip, yeah, Bucky's. Here we come, yeah, Bucky's. That's right. I, I think thirty four is the high on Saturday, Oof. and so yeah. I'm not sure what we'll be doing on Saturday. Yeah. All right, so let's get back um, to starvation time within the hive. Um, as we said, it is if we do the lift method and it's light, that means that the food reserves are gone and supplemental feeding must happen at a two to one sugar water ratio. Um, folks, it, once again, it's two parts sugar to one part sh- to one part water, excuse me. and um, and you'll have the right mix. Now, if you go one to one, as we do during the springtime, uh, you'll create a disaster within the hive itself because the the queen thinks that the 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 nectar is starting to flow, and she'll begin to lay a lot of eggs. Well, the problem is, is when she's laying all those eggs, and 
the colony is not big enough to cover all of those and to keep it warm. So you'll be having a lot of dead larvae being thrown out the front of your hive. Now, one thing I do suggest during this time of the year to keep the, the gut of the bee um, really in, in good tune is tea tree oil or lemongrass oil. They're, they're both essential oils. And you, you just put four or five drops into a gallon of water and the bees love it. Now, the thing is, is if you do one hive, you got to do all your hives because that will promote robbing and, and that's just not a good thing as we all know there. Now, the other thing that you want to want to really take a look at is using a 4% pollen patty. Now, this is 4% protein. Now, whenever you see the number 4% or 15%, that is the protein that is within the, the, the pollen patty that, that you're putting in on, on the hive. So 4% right now is a good protein for this time of the year. Now here, here in the Southeast, you know, come March, you would definitely want to put that into a 15% pollen patty, but overdoing it this time of the year will overproduce eggs again by the queen and you'll lose a lot of larva on that. So you don't want to pull that trigger any, any quicker than absolutely you must uh, on that there. Brian, tell us a little bit more about what's happening on YouTube here. Well, I'm going to share some more details real soon. Um, are we ready to, before I do that, uh, share about the uh, the special that we're running on the patty? Yes, let, let's talk about that. All right, let me get that information pulled up here. And uh, as you guys uh, can see there, 4% uh, pollen patty, that's the 4% protein that Ray was talking about. Uh, we have a 10-pound package. That's how many uh, packages? There, there's 10 patties, okay. one-pound one patties, 10 one-pound patties in a case. And through the 20th, we are offering them for 20% off, and you'll see that QR code right there in the bottom right-hand corner. Pull out your phone, open up your camera app, uh, direct it towards that QR code, and up on your screen will pop a link right to that particular product on the mountain sweet honey, uh, dot com website. And then when you put in that uh, PP20 code there at checkout, uh, the system automatically uh, takes 20% off for you. So uh, we encourage everybody uh, to take advantage of that tonight. I'll leave that up on the screen here just so you have a, a chance to pull out your phone and do the QR code thing. And uh, while we're looking here at Facebook, Christy from Eatonden says it's 42 degrees. Our friend Greg up in Chicago, 18 is what he's dealing with uh, right now. Uh, Brenda and, and Jim, they are in Hillsboro, Kentucky, 31 degrees. And the reason we're mentioning to, uh, the temperature and the towns of people uh, where they're watching tonight, that is your way to get entered to win this free package of bees. So uh, make sure you do that right now on YouTube, Facebook, or um instagram where we're broadcasting for the very first time tonight all right and we'll be having a drawing in about another 20 minutes on that am i correct brian at the end of the show so okay. as we get close right. to the end of the the show tonight but we still have some more important uh, ground to help you guys uh, keep those bees warm okay so let's go to more of the mechanical side of the the hive and that would be those that have screen bottom boards um, as we all know, the, the white sticky board that's on the bottom is only about an eighth of an inch and really gives really minimal insulation value to the hive. And I would strongly suggest anybody north of the Mason-Dixon line to seriously consider swapping out for a solid bottom board to improve the insulation factor within the hive. Um, if, you, if you went from... Uh, the white sticky board to a three quarter inch uh, plywood bottom board, uh, your R value is going to just skyrocket uh, tremendously when you when you use that there. And I would just uh, highly recommend um, putting the screen bottom boards on in the spring once uh, your temperatures are above forty degrees, and get rid of your your solid bottom boards. And that will be a mechanical way of treating for mites uh, that come in on the bees. So uh, once again, screen bottom boards are great. 
Um, but below the Mason Dixon line, you can keep them year round, but those above the Mason Dixon line would should really seriously look at solid bottom boards, uh, during the, the late fall and, uh, winter months on that there, Brian, tell us a little bit about the anti ant feet that we've got going on here. Well, uh, I was going to let you do it because right. I have a video that you recorded you uh, a while back. So I thought the people would, uh, like like to see that and so let's, yeah this uh, was a little video that we did for our website and it just tells you a, a little bit about these these anti-ant feet that you can put on your on on your screen bottom board or on your solid bottom board and eliminate ants getting into your yeah, hive let's let's watch that hi everyone do you have problems with ants coming into your hive whether they be the red ants or black ants they're still a problem for your bees until now, we have not had any kind of a product to offer you for this pest that is coming into your hive until now. And these are anti-ant hive legs. And what they do is the ants cannot get through this dome that's underneath. So they'll crawl up and then they'll fall right back down. Gravity just pulls them down off of that because this is very, very smooth on the underside and the ants cannot grab onto it. It is mounted underneath by four screws, and you'll have four legs that you'll use to mount on the four corners of your hive. Trust me, you'll enjoy this and keep those ants out of the hive. Absolutely. Ray, uh, when I was on the website the other day, I think I just uh, in the search bar typed in ant and it popped uh -huh. up uh, that product right away. So uh, if you're looking for a way, if you've had problems uh, with ants uh, getting up into the hive. The anti-ant leg uh, supports, uh, those are great. They come, what, in a package of four? Uh, yes. A package four, of four. Uh, so you have two two feet for the front of the hive, two feet for the back of the hive. Cool, and you can find that at mm -hmm. mountainsweethoney.com. And again, there uh, in the search, just type in, I just type in the word ant, and it'll uh, bring up the product. You know, Brian, we, um, every year, we think we have enough anti-ant feet and uh, we sell out every year. Um, we've got literally, I think, 500 to 1,000 um, packages of these ready to go for this season. So don't get left behind. Don't wait for the ants to invade. But let's go back to um, insulating your hive. Um, a couple of things that I want to do, Brian, is I want to go back to slide one here. All right. Well, let me know once you have that dialed in, and I'll throw that up on the screen right. for everybody to see. Okay. Let's go back. Uh, we're ready there. Okay. So there's several ways that you can um, uh, insulate your hive. The, this person here uh, basically used um, polystyrene uh, underneath and then used like a, a, a plastic uh, covering on it and then tied it both here at the bottom and at the top to keep those into play. Now, one thing I did see, and I know the reason why he did this, is he left an opening right there. And that that's a vapor uh, escape uh, for those that are in the really cold areas. Um, that, that can be a problem. And that's why he, he did that right there. Now, let's go to this next one here. All right. We'll take a look at this here in just a second here. That looks like my old paintball setup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's kind of talk through, let me see here. Um, we've got, yeah, we're going to get to this in a second, Brian. Let's just go back to me here um, on this here. So if we're insulating a hive, um, the first thing that we want to do is consolidate the hive. A lot of times folks leave two or three uh, medium supers above the deep. And that is not a good thing to do because it leaves so much more room within the hive for the bees to warm. So you want to consolidate that and bring it down and have really just one medium and one deep or two double deeps. Uh, I know a lot of you use double deeps up in the, in the upper North area of our nation. So yes, that is acceptable there. Now, the one thing that you want to have is a barrier behind your hives to protect against the cold northerly winds that are blowing. And, you know, 
if you're out in the Midwest, those winds are blowing almost all the time. So I would highly recommend putting some hay bales up or something uh, to, to help your bees stay a little bit more warmer during these cold January and February and some of March for, for most of you in the, in the upper north. All right, so the other thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the small entrance reducer on the front of the hive, and typically that's only about an inch uh, wide, we want to make sure it's not in the summer mode that is roughly four inches wide because that, once again, allows a lot more cooler air to get into the hive. And that reduced winter size opening is all that is needed by the hive during this time of the year. Now, with that, with that also said, we're also um, stating that we're not going to have any queen excluders on. Those should have been taken off um, at the end of the summer what, after you have pulled your honey from the hive. So queen excluders should not be on the hive at all during this time of the year. And if they have been, most likely the queen is dead and also all, all the workers most likely on that there. So got to make sure the queen excluder is out. Got to make sure the small entrance reducer is in the, in the small one inch area. And, you know, the colony is, at this time of the year is going to be on the upper side of, of the hive uh, as far up as possible because heat rises and heat rises within the hive itself. So the bees understand this and that's why they'll, they'll move up from the, the brood part of the hive up into the supers. Ray, so, I think this might be the appropriate time to jump in with a question from uh, yes. David Mason. Would I need to switch to a solid bottom board in the winter when using the eight frame Cirocell Defender board? Okay. Um, we're still learning on, on this here because it's a new product, Brian. Um, that is a very thick um, bottom board that, that is there. And, it, and, and it's a high-grade food plastic that Cirocell uses. And we'd like to have some feedback from those of you up in the, the north area of our, of our country to tell us how that is doing so that we can advise people next uh, winter on what to do there. David, uh, thank you for that question. Yes. Aubrey, thanks for bringing that uh, to my attention. If you do have questions as we go, put those in the chat as well. And uh, at the appropriate uh, point in time, we'll uh, ask Ray what he thinks about that. So thanks again for the question. All right. So we, we've talked about the heat rising within the hive itself. Now, the thing that we have to remember is that bees do not want to defecate within the hive itself. They want to do a quick fly out from the hive, defecate, and then return to the hive. If you go out and there's white snow out there and you see these little yellow droppings, that, that's your bees defecating outside of the hive. And that's a, that's a great thing because trap bees can result in the Nosema virus. And once it starts within the hive, it, it's all downward from there. So um, here, here's your takeaways again. Um, consolidate your hive. Don't have a lot of extra supers. Put a barrier that helps protect it against the northerly winds. And make sure your entrance reducer is to the small side, one inch. And take out the queen excluder. And the colony will be in the upper area of your hive because heat rises. And you got to make sure, like we were looking at that beehive at the beginning of the program here, um, they got to be able to fly out to defecate. If not, Nosema is going to be part of, of the problem within the hive itself. Brian, what do we have going on now? Nano man checking in. <laughs> this is a, a great discussion, he says. Right. So thank you. Uh, appreciate uh, that feedback there. Alan's cracking me up. Uh, he's from McCormick, South Carolina. He says it's still 41 degrees. So uh, I, I don't know that we need the, uh, the, the, uh, the update every 10 minutes. Only one entry per person necessary to be uh, entered into the contest uh, to win the bees. And let me quickly just go ahead and put this up again. Oh, uh, not that. That's not what I wanted to put up. What I wanted to remind you guys about was the uh, pollen patty here. So 
Uh, we mentioned this special a little earlier, the 4% uh, protein pollen patty. You get a 10 pound that, uh, package that's going to be 10 of these patties. 20% off. Use that QR code to take you right to the uh, particular page on our website for the pollen patty and then type in PP20 and uh, behind the scenes, uh, all the calculations take place to save you 20%. How quickly should that product arrive? What uh, is the shipping policy? It, announced, it ships honey? within one business day, Brian. All, all of our beekeeping supplies ship within one business day, whether it's during the 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 winter here or right during the peak season that we we have is our bee season and you know what is it 48 40, days? Oh, i'm reading the crawler there on the bottom of the 49. screen 49, 49 days till right. bee season begins a lot of new beekeepers are probably tuning in because they're they've been thinking about yes. this now for a little while and when we start talking about bee season that may not uh, mean anything to someone someone who's a novice. What are we talking about when we say bee season? Yeah, bee begins? season uh, for our beekeepers is typically um, the first week of March when our bees start going out. We have our overwintered nukes. We're we're probably about seventy five percent sold out on our overwintered nukes, and uh, those go out on the seventh or, or excuse me, the eighth and ninth of March. And then every week thereafter, Brian, we've got um, two, two days a week that we're shipping a lot of bees out. Folks are picking a lot of bees up, and that's what we call bee season here. Very cool. Uh, before we continue on, uh, dry cut honey making me laugh here. Are you guys sure you didn't buy the gaming computer for personal pleasure and just decided <laughs> to use research as an excuse for a tax write-off? <laughs> <laughs> well, no comment at this time. A good uh, question, though. Oh, we, we do have a wonderful uh, studio, and uh, Mountain Sweet Honey is a, a generous uh, benefactor to sponsor the program. If you're not connected with Mountain Sweet Honey, go to mountainsweethoney.com at some point in time. Sign up for their free email newsletter. Um, several times throughout the week, you'll receive uh, instructional information, uh, sales information before it uh, breaks uh, for everybody else and updates on the bee season. That's mountainsweethoney.com. And they're the reason we have this uh, nice uh, personal gaming computer. Uh, I'm sorry, podcast studio that, that we have for the live stream. All right. So now let's take a look at another product that that's a lot more easier. Um, Brian, let's go back to that slide here. Okay. So we've been looking at this slide, the, this uh, beekeeper, spent a lot of time making uh, the uh, cutting the styrofoam and putting the wrap on it and then tying it. A more simple play, place that we go on this is a slide over. And basically you take the top uh, outer cover off and just slide it over. It's called a bee cozy. And the bee cozies have an, a high R factor to them and are made and designed for multiple years of use. The, the thing though, that I will say is right here, let's put it on red. So, or blue that we can see here, um, right here, it's covered up with snow on any kind of a wrap that you do. You want to have that space open for your bees to go in and out. Now, obviously here, like we talked about earlier, the snow's covering it on up, but that, that entrance reducer must be open for, for that to happen. And what some people do is they just put a nail right there so that the, the insulation goes up and over and back down again. Um, but a bee cozy wrap is really good. It only takes maybe three minutes max to put it on, on your, on your, um, hives. Now, Folks, I'm going to tell you right up front that we are sold out of 10 frame B cozies. We only have a few eight frame B cozies left. So B cozy is a, is an excellent way to, to pr protect your colony during these cold winter months. All Would right. you have a do it yourself uh, option? If uh, we run out of selling those, is there some sort of, uh, yeah, we're going to product? talk about that soon as we get done with this segment right. um, here. Um, tell us again about those pollen patties, Brian. The uh, special that we have going on uh, really is going to be hard to beat. 20% off with that uh, coupon code PP20. 
use the QR code, just open up the uh, the phone app on your phone, your uh, iPad, whatever device that you have, point it, the QR code automatically brings up the special link where you'll uh, put in all of your information and at checkout, type in that code, the 20% off, uh, we'll do that calculation uh, right there before purchase. And then uh, just in a couple of days, you'll have these pollen patties uh, ready to feed your bees, not only uh, <clears throat> making sure they're warm with the information that Ray is sharing tonight, but that they, that they are well-fed also. Okay. Thank you, Brian, for telling us about the pollen patties there. And still plenty of folks on YouTube. Yeah, um, I wanted to share a very nice comment uh, that had just come in uh, from Scott. He said, I just bought 12 nuke boxes last week from you guys. The best quality yep. and prices around. Thank you for all of you, uh, all that you do. And those, those are very well-made nuke boxes. And we got a great deal on them. And we're just passing on the savings there's nobody within twenty thirty dollars offering a nuke box for what we're doing, and that also comes with an inner cover to it too. So you get a solid bottom board, you get um, all four sides of the nuke box, inner cover, outer cover, and the outer cover actually ha has a, a metal top to it. So it's designed for years and years of of use and. There's no no need to look anywhere else. I mean, just absolutely great buy on those there. Ray, we also have a question. Uh, this would apply to the local uh, viewers or those that are willing to drive to where we are located yes. in Tacoa, Georgia. They want to know, will the store be open on Saturdays once B season starts? Yes, our, our Saturday begins on, hold on just a second here. Let me pull my calendar up. I was told there'd be no math on this and, program. Yeah, let's see here. We'll go to the to the calendar. And while he's pulling right. that up, uh, we are located in northeast Georgia, Tacoa, Georgia, about an hour and a half northeast of Atlanta. And we do have people that will travel uh, from great distances to come and uh, pick up their bees. Uh, now, we do ship bees. We, In fact, that's one of the things we know how to do is to ship bees but uh, should you want to make that uh, trip, all the information's there on the website. What would you find out about that Saturday? All right, day? March 9th is our first Saturday, and it will go all the way through to the first Saturday in June. So um, Kendra uh, is our main go-to gal uh, for, for our retail store, and she'll be there ready to welcome you. And I think also Aubrey, get to meet Aubrey in person, not on camera, but in person, Brian. That uh, that face she's making says she really enjoys working on Saturdays. Yeah, I yeah, know exactly yeah, what yeah, that face yeah. means. Yep. All right. So let's let's go to uh, our next way of protecting our bees, and that's using bales of hay. Uh, you might think bales of hay. How do you do that? Well, Brian, let's let's go to the the next slide here. What you would do is you just put your bales of hay all around your your hive. And then on the top, you would use a, a thick polystyrene and that would keep the heat in. So it goes up and is reflected back down on the heat. Now you'll see there's bees right here that, that are just enjoying this, this day. Now, if you were in the upper north, you would want to go on ahead and let me back out of all this. All right, so if you're in the, the, the north, here's one bale, here's one bale. You would go on ahead and put two bales there in front of it. And then you would put a little PVC pipe, a one-inch ID inside diameter, going out through the middle of these two, two bales here. So we have one bale here, two bales there. And it would be right in the middle that you would put that that PVC pipe running out through there. That would give the optimum R factor for heat. And what's really good about this is, you know, hay does get wet. And when you have that polystyrene here on the top, that really does protect uh, any kind of water coming down on the hive itself. And 
as you can see, this person here has put a really large size one on this one. And so the water is out on this side right here. Let's see here. Let me do this. So the water is out here on these sides. And that's what's so good because this is going to be dry hay here and here that's all around the hive itself. So again, the polystyrene really makes a difference when it comes to this here. All right, now let's go to the next slide here. And we'll use this one uh, to help us as we, as we talk through here. All right, so what you're doing here is we're gonna, we're gonna just say this is the north side of the hive and this is the, the southeast here. The winds are blowing, they're hitting this back wall and that will make the wind blow up and over uh, on this here. So that is a great thing for your hives. If you were to put the polystyrene on top here, all the way across each of these, and in this diagram here, it would be three different sheets of polystyrene, and then put your hay bales up here or put uh, bricks or blocks on top so it will not blow away. That way there, um, your bees are going to be fine. As you can see, the bees here have already been working. Um, they've already thrown out some of the dead bees from, from the overnight, and they're very busy on this here. And again, is if this was far up north, you would put another hay, hay bale here, put a tube that runs out, and then put another hay bale here, put your polystyrene over the top, and then you're locked and loaded for, for the for the the winter months on that there. All right, so that is what I have thus far for for us to look at as it becomes and talks about um, the the extreme north. Now we're going to even go further north now, and in just a minute and talk about what those in northern Michigan, New England, Wisconsin and the Dakotas, Minnesota will do those beekeepers there. And of course, Canada um, talked with a guy up in um, New Hampshire this summer. Uh, he had 40 hives and I want to share what, what he, what he said and where our conversation went as overwintering our bees. Brian, tell us a little bit more about these pollen patties. 20% off. Uh, let me pull that up here real quick. You guys uh, will want to use this QR code. This is a really good deal on uh, the type of nutrition that your bees uh, really need this time of the year. Use that QR code uh, to pull up the link that you need to use. It will take you to a special landing page at mountainsweethoney.com. Put in PP20. <coughs> we'll take that 20% off and uh, ship these to you. Of course, if you just want to go to mountsweethoney.com, uh, you can type in uh, pollen patty, find the 4% pollen patty, do the same thing, that uh, all important code of PP20. And we are getting very close uh, to having our giveaway of a package of Italian bees. So I'll, I'll ask Aubrey to begin uh, thinking about uh, randomly selecting someone to win as you see uh, with the crawler there the chiron at the bottom of the screen all you need to do is tell us what town you're watching from the current temperature for example frank uh, in kendallville indiana 22 degrees right now is what he's reporting what what city is that uh kendallville i believe was what Missouri? i saw uh indiana indiana Kendall, okay kendallville indiana all 22 right. Mike uh, is uh, in Minnesota. He doesn't indicate the temperature, but I know <laughs> with some of the information that uh, you're going to be sharing yep. for our beekeepers that are way up north, uh, you'll want to keep uh, doing that. But go ahead real quick on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. What town? What's the temperature? And in just a minute, uh, I'll be asking Aubrey to, to bring me uh, a name to announce. Well, thank you, Brian. Okay, so this is for those that... that are our customers up in uh, Canada and Northern Michigan, uh, New England, Wisconsin, the Dakotas. Um, this is really specialty beekeeping that I'm gonna talk about right now. Um, 
even Alaska, um, they're, they're changing their ways. In Alaska, a lot of the beekeepers just kill off their colonies because they don't want the winter to kill them off. And that, that perspective of beekeeping uh, is changing this year. And it's changing because now uh, beekeepers are beginning to look at using barns or even their garages to keep their bees sheltered during the cold winter months in these areas. And um, I came across a, a beekeeper up in New Hampshire and I, and I really sat down and I talked to him. I said, you know, how do you guys get through these um, five feet of snow? And, you know, a lot of times it's heavy snow. And what we were just looking at of using hay bales and polystyrene, it would cave in the polystyrene, uh, the, the snow, the heavy snow that they get up there. So he was telling me, he goes, look, we're using our garages. We're using... Uh, a space heater, you know, just to keep it somewhere around 40 degrees, maybe 50 degrees inside of our garages or in our barns. And, uh, and he says it works. And, and I, I made special note of this uh, because first of all, if you have, you know, 10 hives and you go to put them in your garage, you're maxed out. Um, you got to be looking for barns or something like that there. If, if you, if you have more than uh, 20 or, or so hives. So um, very, very um, uh, great option for those, those beekeepers in those Northern areas there. And to try to keep that, that ambient temperature within the barn or within the garage in the 40 degree, 50 degree range. So, that is a, a quick perspective on how to do beekeeping this time of the year. And I want to talk now, uh, changing it up just a little bit here, is the queens, we, we offer Italian, Carniolan, Russian hybrids, and Caucasians. Folks, the Caucasian bee packages, we thought we had enough to get us through this season, and they've already sold out uh, for this season. So it's time to start planning for requeening your hive or splitting your hives uh, soon as, as soon as that pollen starts coming into the hive there. And normally it's the maple trees that wake up the queen and say it's time to start the dance. And uh, so all of our dates are open at this time. Uh, we're seeing a large uh, order of queens going out. Um, uh, we've been kind of in the dormant period this last week here because of all the cold weather. You know, this time of the year is, is kind of funny for us on our side of the fence. We know when the, the phones get quiet, it means that a lot of our nation is, is suffering from really cold temperatures. But the minute there is a, a warmness that, that's out there, all the beekeepers say, ah, I got I to gotta buy, um, buy my queens or I got to buy my packages for this coming season. So what we are seeing already as of today, because the warmer temperatures are coming in through the, the lower Midwest net right now, is that we're seeing a large volume of orders coming in. And on top of that, I just want to digress just a minute here, is if you're the 100,000th invoice or, or sale that we have, we're going to give you up to $1,000 off on your whatever order you have that is the 100,000th order that we take in. Wow. And, and Brian, <laughs> that's pretty it, good. It's something that we wanted to do just to say thank you to, to everybody. Look, folks, we wouldn't be where we are today without each of you. And I just want to say thank you for your beekeeping business. And now I'm going to get back into the subject here. Um, back to Queens. Our Queens are shipped UPS overnight. No USPS. UPS overnight and they come right to you the next day and you, you don't want to stick them in the mail um, by no means because they're going to get overheated and you're going to have dead queens when you open up your box. All right, so let's talk a little bit about food stores within the hive. Um, as I stated earlier, January and February, many beekeepers lose their colonies due to starvation. I would say, you know, you're looking at a third to two thirds uh, of bee, bee losses are, are due to starvation and or 
freeze outs this time of the year. So those are the two biggies that really eat into the bee colony uh, collapses during this time of the year. All right, so the colonies are eating the honey and pollen really heavy right now. And that's why you wanna go back out to your hives and do the lift method on the back of the hive, lift it up about an inch and just see how heavy it is. If it's light, you wanna go on ahead and start feeding. A 4% pollen patty would be excellent um, without stimulating the queen to lay more eggs. Now, you'll wanna use a 15% protein pollen patty two weeks before the first pollen source blooms. And that way you'll have a jump uh, on your brood uh, and getting ready to um, split your hive in the first or second week after the, the pollen starts coming in. All right, the reason why you don't wanna, uh, and we said this earlier, the reason why we don't want to feed the 15% protein during the winter months is the queen will begin to produce more brood and the colony uh, cannot keep the brood warm, and the result is the brood is chilled and dies, and you'll have a lot of dead brood outside of the hive. All right, Brian, are we almost ready for... I just had a name uh, sent over by Aubrey, and All right. uh, what we're giving away is a free package of Italian honeybees. Uh, it will be shipped out according uh, to the appropriate shipping date for our winner's location, and here we go with the announcement. Right. It's Michelle Gregg. Michelle Gregg. Congratulations. From, from Sonoya. I'm not not sure which state that is, but uh, Sonoya. All Did right. I say that correctly? Yes, I think so. All right. I There's, think so. My um, rules always say it authoritatively. There's several Sonoyas um, that I know of in different states. All right. Well, so, Michelle, let us know where that is. Of course, we have yes. her contact information, and I'm sure Aubrey's already sent out a, uh, a little notification. But uh, Michelle, thank you. If you haven't signed up for our newsletter at mountainsweethoney.com, I certainly encourage you to do that. And uh, what a what a great show tonight. Lots of uh, yeah, we're, powerful we're, information. We just got a few minutes here before the hour. And folks, one thing I want to say is we're going to try to get back on the air between now and bee season every two weeks. Brian and I are going to try to bring you the most current information to get ready and to get you step-by-step -step ready uh, for the new bee season this spring. All right, speaking of spring, these are the things that you need to make sure you don't get caught from behind on. Is one, you wanna repair any supers. If there's knots that are loose, go on ahead and uh, put some filler in there, paint it over, get some fresh paint on it. Now, always use pastel colors. Never use dark paints. If you use dark paint, it overheats the hives during the summer and you'll have uh, a really struggling hive uh, producing uh, what we all want is honey. So um, make sure that that's there. And also make sure your, your supers are all square um, on that. You want to have squared up supers. Uh, number two, uh, clean up your hives. Be ready when you need to add those supers because man, there are times that there's so much nectar coming in that they run out of space. And the last thing that you want to do is have to go out and clean some supers up because of the nectar flow. And number four, um, order supers and frames now, get them put together, have them painted up. Uh, there's nothing worse. And we see this every season. Um, I got to have supers and I got to have frames. Um, and, I, and I say, when are you putting them on? this afternoon. Well, they're not going to be painted on the supers. And that means that there's going to be some warpage uh, once they get wet a couple of times. And the frames are going to have wet glue. And that gets on the bees there too. So you want to make sure that you have this uh, in place weeks in advance so that when you're ready um, and the bees are ready, you're ready. Now, number five is hive stand maintenance. Make sure that your hive stands are sturdy and ready for those heavy weights of the nectar when they start coming in. And number six, move your hives to new apiaries. Um, if, if you're thinking about moving them, this is a great time to do it. The bees are all held up within the hive and, and they'll, they'll find their new bearings uh, once it starts getting a little warmer out on that there. And number seven, uh, 
moving hives to better areas for more sun. You know, a lot of times new beekeepers put a, they think that the hives need to be in shade. No, no, no. Um, the hives need to be in full sunshine and they'll prosper. Um, when they're back into the shade areas, a lot of evils uh, come in, such as small hive beetles, mold and fungus and all that fun stuff. So the more sun, the better. Folks, we appreciate you tuning in today and congratulations to Michelle Gregg. Michelle Gregg. And, and we appreciate everybody tuning in. We'll have an update on our next broadcast and it'll be approximately two weeks from today. Folks, have a great day. Don't forget our 4% off pollen patties, 20% off, good through uh, Friday or Saturday or Sunday, I guess. Uh, Sunday, um, 120.24 is our, is our expiration on that coupon. Folks, thanks again and stay warm. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave this up on the screen for just a few minutes as we sign off. So if you need to do that QR code to take advantage of uh, the savings, please do that. Thank you, guys. We are grateful to have you tuned in to Buzz TV.